A series of brutal murders that left the country terrified for decades, and a gangster who kept a city locked under an iron fist of fear. These men waged a campaign of terror on America. Even today, the thought of Charles Manson is enough to send a chill down even the most hardened spine. With a legacy of bloodshed and terror, many see him as a personification of evil in America. Manson is infamous for his role in the Tate-LaBianca murders that occurred in California in the late 1960s. His followers, who called themselves the Manson family, carried out the murders, which shocked and unnerved Los Angeles. While Manson was not one of the people who actively participated in the Tate-LaBianca killings, he was still convicted and imprisoned in 1971. After his conviction, Manson spent more than 45 years in a California prison before passing away in 2017. During his trial, he acted increasingly bizarre and violent, and even carved a swastika into his forehead. The courts originally sentenced him to death, but that was later changed to life in prison. Even though he was in prison for most of his adult life, Manson's name and likeness still spread fear. His public interviews were combative at times, and he refused to express remorse over the killings. And when I stand on the mountain and I say, do it! It gets done. If it don't get done, then I'll move on it. Among infamous American serial killers, the Zodiac Killer stands out as a particularly frightening case. As of 2023, his identity has never been discovered, and no one knows if it was a single person acting alone, several independent people, a group, or something even more sinister. The Zodiac Killer first came to attention in 1969 following a series of unsolved murders beginning the year prior. Though they did not identify themselves, the killer took public responsibility for several killings and made a habit of communicating with authorities and newspapers after carrying out their gruesome murders. Understandably, people in the Bay Area were on edge about the potential to become another Zodiac victim. The authorities' inability to capture the killer or to stop his killings was not reassuring, and their taunts in the form of ciphers were chilling. It's unknown how many killings the Zodiac Killer is responsible for, or if a single individual is even responsible for all of them and so anywhere from five to more than a dozen murders are linked to them. Several potential suspects have been floated as possible Zodiacs, but no one has ever been convicted for any of the killings associated with this legend. Long known as one of America's most infamous outlaws, for many years Al Capone was one of the most feared men in the country. Capone first came to prominence in Chicago in the 1920s when he became a significant player in the city's illegal alcohol distribution business during Prohibition. Within a few years, Capone was Chicago's top gangster, and his ruthless reputation preceded him wherever he went. In 1929, it's thought that he ordered the murder of rival gangsters in the notorious St. Valentine's Day Massacre. The killings shocked the city with their brutality, and almost immediately, Chicago police were pointing fingers at Capone. Capone's crew, who were known as the Outfit, terrorized the streets of Chicago, spraying automatic weapons at rivals and distributing illegal liquor throughout the city. Capone seemed invincible. He was able to escape criminal responsibility for things like murder and violating prohibition, and was only jailed for short periods of time, even when he was arrested with weapons. However, the other shoe finally dropped in 1931 when the federal government convicted Capone of tax evasion. He eventually served time at the infamous Alcatraz prison in California, but mental health issues began to take their toll. He died in 1947, a hollow shell of the fire-breathing gangster he once was. For many people, just the name Ted Kaczynski is enough to send a shiver down their spine. A Chicago native, Kaczynski was a graduate of both Harvard and the University of Michigan. Just over a decade after completing his PhD at Michigan, Kaczynski started terrorizing the country. He sent bombs in the mail to various targets, which would explode once they tried to open them. His targets were seemingly random and included academics and business executives, as well as several colleges in Chicago and California. People everywhere lived in fear of opening a mail bomb. From 1978 to 1995, Kaczynski killed three people and injured 23 through his attacks. For years, the authorities could not track down or find out who was responsible for the bombings, leaving Kaczynski at large and able to continue his actions. Eventually, he acquired the nickname of the Unabomber, which was based on the FBI's name for their investigation. In 1995, several media outlets published Kaczynski's manifesto, Industrial Society and Its Future, after authorities thought doing so could help the investigation. It worked, and it was his brother David Kaczynski who helped authorities discover the identity of the Unabomber. Authorities arrested Kaczynski, and he was sentenced to several life sentences after pleading guilty to multiple charges. He died in prison on June 10, 2023. In the 1970s, for residents throughout Washington, Oregon, Utah, Colorado, and Florida, the threat of falling victim to serial killer Ted Bundy felt very real. From 1974 to 1978, Bundy left a trail of more than two dozen victims across the United States, all of them women. 
He lured his victims to his Volkswagen Beetle under the guise of being an authority figure or needing help, but would kidnap and kill them instead. The police first caught Bundy in Utah in 1975, a year after he had started killing and following months of people pointing fingers at him over the bodies. However, he managed to escape custody twice and fled to Florida. The news of Bundy and his crimes attracted massive media attention, enthralling some but scaring many more. Once in Florida, he committed even more instances of rape and murder, terrifying communities and putting college students on edge in the areas he attacked. But I feel I'm going to make it, no doubt in my mind. After being arrested again, Bundy was sentenced to death in 1979 for murder. The government executed Bundy a decade later in 1989, following another death sentence. Known infamously as the Killer Clown, John Wayne Gacy was one of the most notorious serial killers in American history. Gacy operated in the Chicago area during the 1960s and 1970s, killing more than 30 victims. He was dubbed the Killer Clown due to his habit of dressing up like Pogo the Clown and entertaining kids in his neighborhood. Police in Chicago first started investigating Gacy in 1975, but it was not until the Christmas season of 1978 that they were able to actually get him off the streets for good. Previously, Gacy had been convicted on sodomy charges against the teenager, and he served time in prison in the 1960s. The public became aware of the investigations surrounding Gacy, and his reputation got so bad he even tried to sue the police. Yet within a week of his lawsuit, police found bodies buried in his house, leading to his full confession. The heinous details of his exploits horrified the public, and by April 1979, he was facing 33 murder charges. The government executed Gacy on May 10, 1994, finally bringing an end to one of the most frightening and dreadful killers in American history. While they are often idealized and romanticized in Hollywood movies like Goodfellas, mob gangsters are some of the most feared men in American history. One of the most infamous of them all was John Gotti, though he was often known by various nicknames like the Dapper Don or the Teflon Don. A native of the Bronx, Gotti rose to the head of the Gambino crime family in 1985 and began a ruthless tenure. It was the godfather without the fancy music. Gotti, in contrast with most gangsters, was also a public figure and was featured often in the newspapers, which he would sometimes pose for. This only added to the Gotti legend as he seemed virtually untouchable by law enforcement. He was arrested and charged with crimes several times, but usually got away through bribery and intimidation. Anyone considering testifying or informing against Gotti had to think twice, as he was widely feared as one of the most powerful illicit characters in the country. Eventually, things caught up with Gotti, and he ended up getting a life sentence in the early 90s for various crimes, including murder. Gotti died while in prison in 2002, but his name still lives on in infamy today. Of all the things California had to worry about in the 1970s and 80s, the mystery of the Golden State Killer may have been the most haunting and chilling of all. It wasn't until 2018 that advances in criminology technology led to his capture. We now know his name is Joseph D'Angelo, but for many years he was simply the Golden State Killer. A former police officer, D'Angelo started his spat of killings and sexual assaults in 1975. The murder in the first degree, do you admit or deny that? I, I, I admit. For years, he terrorized the Bay Area, killing and sexually abusing both individuals and couples. He is thought to have been active from 1975 to 1981 and again in 1986. The police were unable to track him or convict any one of the murders for decades, leaving many in the Bay Area fearful of becoming another victim. The case made national headlines, and the fact that no one could identify D'Angelo only made him more terrifying. In 2018, after decades of no activity, the police arrested D'Angelo and charged him with more than a dozen counts of first-degree murder. He was convicted and sentenced to life in prison, but the fear he brought with him will never be forgotten. Good afternoon. This is the Barrow Gang. Now, if everybody will just take it easy, nobody will get hurt. The tale of Bonnie and Clyde is one of the most notorious in American history, and while they may be romanticized today as anti-heroes, during their crime spree, they were among the most feared outlaws in the country. Born Clyde Chestnut Barrow in Texas, Barrow first met Bonnie Parker in 1930, having already been in prison. The two started a relationship, but it was not until his next release from prison in 1932 that their crime spree would begin. Parker and Barrow began robbing banks and terrorizing the country, killing both civilians and law enforcement during their violent encounters. The public quickly learned about their exploits and were both fascinated and horrified. Barrow managed to stay on the run for more than a year, evading law enforcement or having shootouts when they collided. It was not until May 1934 that Barrow died in a shootout, with more than 150 bullets riddling his and Parker's bodies. When they died, it was the first time in years people of the Southwest and Midwest could breathe easily. 
Another of history's romanticized gangsters, John Dillinger was one of the most notorious villains in American history. Already a criminal, in 1924, Dillinger found himself staring down a potential 20-year prison sentence. But in 1933, he was able to make parole and immediately expanded his life of crime, committing a string of high-value robberies and helping breaking his accomplices out of prison. Dillinger got arrested for helping with the prison break, but his friends returned the favor and got him back out. The Dillinger gang then went on to commit many more robberies and murders, constantly making national headlines. While he may have been immortalized in the newspapers, his victims and average Americans were probably more than a little terrified of him. He had a reputation for murdering police officers, orchestrating prison escapes, and committing brutal robberies. The FBI declared him public enemy number one. Dillinger was shot and killed by law enforcement in 1934, barely a year after his original parole from prison, leaving a bloody legacy of terror behind. 